Last week, Google released Gemma 2, a new version of the open model that you can deploy locally. You can use that commercially. You can even fine tune that to your need. And all you have to do is to comply to Gemma license. Hi, I'm Tomek. And in today's video, I will test out the model, check out how good it is and show you how you can test it yourself without any extra cost whatsoever. Gemma 2 has been released in two uh, sizes, 9 billion and 27 billion parameters. What is worth mentioning is that the bigger size can outperform much bigger 70 billion parameters Lama 3, which is quite impressive. In this video, I will start with showing you how simply you can test it yourself with no extra cost, so be sure to check out this, this part. And later on, I will do some tests myself. I will compare quickly uh, one of the queries to GPT-4. I will test out how good uh, Gemma 2 can produce code, in this case Python, and how good it can understand and translate complex uh, text or articles, how good it can translate text to another language, even though officially Gemma 2 doesn't support multi-language, but does it? Let's check it out. And yeah, and that's about it. I will finish the video with a short explanation how you can deploy the model once you like it in your own environment. Be sure to check out the description for detailed timestamps if you want to see only part of the video. As you know, Google added quite cool feature to Google AI Studio. From the model section, you can choose Gemma 2 and start interacting with the model yourself. You don't need to deploy that, you can just check how good it is by yourself. All you have to do is to log in to aistudio.google.com. But what if I don't have an account, you ask? That's quite simple. I will show, you, show it to you from the incognito window. All you have to do from the perspective of the new user is navigate to aistudio.google.com, click sign in to the Google AI Studio, use any valid Google account, for example, your Gmail account, log in with your, you know, Credentials. Uh, let's close the first pop up we've built with Gemini. Underneath, we can see our Google API Terms of Service and Gemini API Terms of Service. Let's accept that. Uh, close some of those pop ups, and we are all set. Without any uh, you know, payment information whatsoever, you can start prototyping with Gemma 2. By the way, you can also check Gemini models when you are here. All right, now that I lost half of my audience, let's continue. Gemma 2 proves to be quite awesome, and I don't want to talk about some fixed benchmarks. Let's navigate to Large Model System Organization, and let's go to Chatbot Arena. I will show you quickly how that works, because that's quite awesome way to compare models. All you have to do is ask a query to the models, and you're going to ask query to two models. In my case, I will ask something tricky. How many days passed since the beginning of YouTube and July 2nd, uh, 2024? And we've got the answer from two models. You can compare which model gave you a better answer. Maybe both are good, maybe both are bad, maybe one is better. And all you have to do, your job is to vote. In this case, A is better, let me do the vote. And then I can see which model was, uh, you know, which one is which. And I just gave the vote for one of the models. So let's navigate to the leaderboard and we can see that on top of the leaderboards, all the models available are, are proprietary, not the open models. But the first open model with Gemma license is Gemma 2, which is quite awesome. And if we change the category from overall to multi-tune, which is quite important for, you know, chat applications and ongoing conversation, once the uh, page loads, we can also see that Gemma 2 is on the top of open models, which is, you know, quite impressive, especially that you can download that and uh, deploy that on your own environment with for example, no internet access. Okay, so let's give it a quick try with one of the readers I like to use. Let's say Anna has seven brothers and each brother has exactly two sisters. How many sisters does Anna have? And of course, the proper answer is one, since there is Anna and one additional sister. Let's see what Gemma 2 will respond. And we've got a good answer. Gemma, Anna has one sister and a short explanation, which is correct. And now I will navigate to playgroundopenai.com and I will ask the same question to uh, GPT-4. 
Now I've got nothing against OpenAI. They do a wonderful job. I just want to show you how to compare this open model with this widow to one of the best well-known models, GPT-4. I'll ask exactly the same question and we are getting the wrong answer. Even if we clarify that Anna is a girl, just to make 100% sure model understands that, the answer is still wrong. Now, that's pretty impressive that the open model, uh, Gemma 2, that you can download and deploy it yourself, or even fine tune that if you need to, uh, can answer that riddle better than GPT-4. Let's test how well Gemma 2 understands uh, some complex uh, articles. So in this case, I will navigate to Hugging Face Portal, copy an article about LoRa, which is a way or a technique to uh, fine tune the large language models. Let me copy uh, the article and ask uh, Gemma2 to explain this article in simple terms and I will add it as a context. Of course, unfortunately, uh, Gemma2 is just a large language model, so it can only take text as an input, no images, but text is fine, it's good enough. And within a few seconds, we've got a nice, uh, easy to understand explanation. It gets a bit more technical as well, but that's a long article, so that's fair. And at, at the end, we've got a nice analogy to better understand the whole concept. Uh, let's try to ask some follow-up question. For example, uh, we can see that uh, this model, I don't know, let's say it enables us fa with faster training. So how how is it possible? How LoRa enables faster training? And again, uh, quite uh, fast, we got a nice explanation based on the article I pasted uh, with kind of technical breakdown, but at the end there was an analogy to explain that in simple terms, which is really nice, uh, really nice job, Gemma. All right, let's continue. Gemma2 is a universal large language model that can be um, fine-tuned for any specific task. But let's see out of the box how well it can handle programming. I will ask it to create a snake game in Python with some custom message when I lose, just, you know, just to make sure it's not very um, out of the box. And uh, as you can see, the code is being generated quite fast. However, for the full message, uh, we have to wait a little bit. In this case, it's 45, 46 seconds. And once the full message is executed, let's take a look. We've got a nice uh, code base of the application. Mm. Okay, that looks good. And then we've got an explanation. And that's really nice because we've got all the details what's going on in the code base. And even at the end, there's an instruction how to run it. So we have to save it to a file, install Pygame, that's the library being used, and just run the application. So let's do it just that. I will copy the code base and save it to snake.py. I already have Pygame installed in my environment, so I can skip that step. And all I have to do is to run the application with Python. So Python with snake.py. And, and yeah, perfect. We've got our application ready. And as you can see, it's actually functioning quite well. Um, I increased the speed of the video a little bit, uh, so you can see me playing uh, for a shorter period of time. And let's see what will happen if I kill myself. I've got my custom message. Oh, you have lost. Perfect. Um, it, there seems to be some issue with closing the application, but that's all right for now, right? I'm pretty sure that that's a quick fix. Uh, let's check how well Gemma understands the code that it was produced. So let's ask what we have to do to change the color of the snake from green to yellow, for instance. And then given output, it's quite nice because we've got only part of the code we have to modify. And also uh, the explanation and information we have to define what yellow is. So let's check it in the code base if that makes sense, if there is a function called draw snake with that particular line. And as we can see on the line 35, it is indeed, there is an um, green being uh, specified. We can swap it to yellow, make sure that yellow is defined, and we are home. Now, I would say that's a pass. That's a really nice uh, job with uh, Gemma as a universal, not specifically programming language model. Let's also check how Gemma can handle uh, already existing code base. In this case, I have a small code created. It's a working code, but poorly formatted. So I'll ask it to for refactor that with some changes like add uh, doc strings, uh, make the naming convention a bit more meaningful, uh, perhaps uh, make sure it's a 
app 8 compliance since that's a python code but don't change the logic right i just want to format it better but don't change the logic that i came up with so pasting the code as well and there we go uh, it seems very promising we've got a better naming convention better names being used we've got dog strings and yeah and my logic seems to be preserved and we've got even information what has been changed and uh, the explanation of the code now looking at the code base yeah i would say that's a really nice job if i would to uh, work with that code i'll be much more happy than the original one so that's a pass as well and for the final test of today let me ask Gemma to compose an email to my boss asking about the race uh, giving some free creative reason for that and as a plot twist i will ask it to do it in polish now apparently uh, Gemma too is uh, you know very well with english language not other languages but as you can see on the screen it handles at least polish very good if you don't know that language let me assure you that's a very well written email with proper you know construct in in polish um, let me also ask to translate that to english so you can see what the message looks like and we've got a very nice uh, translation as well uh, so maybe officially Gemma 2 doesn't support multi languages but you have to test it yourself. Maybe for your use case, it's good enough. And if it's not, remember you can always fine tune the language to make it better. What if you like the model and you wish to deploy that, uh, deploy it yourself? You can navigate to kaggle.com and you can download or deploy the model over here. And I will create a separate video about that in short future. So make sure to check out my uh, channel. And you can also uh, navigate to Vertex AI to model garden and once you accept Gemma terms of service in kaggle.com of course you have to do the same uh, you will have option to deploy that as well just to make sure you actually read the terms of service right it, it, it's there for a reason and there is a kind of one click deploy button and once uh, you are in the mm, proper window you can choose either uh, which size you want to deploy 27 billion or 9, 9 billion and if you want to make the deployment on vertex AI or google kubernetes engine and with gke we've got a nice yaml definition and by the way you can take the yaml definition and either try to deploy that on your kubernetes engine outside of uh, google cloud of course as long as you've got sufficient you know gpu and uh, compute uh, power to run the model okay this seems like a good place to finish be sure to check out my channel for other videos related to uh, Genative AI. I will also create in the future more uh, videos about Gemma 2, maybe something about fine tuning, uh, deploying that in your own environment and even trying to deploy that uh, for the environment with no internet access. Thank you for watching and if you've got any questions, be sure to post them in the comment section. I'll do my best to uh, address them as soon as I can. Alright, thank you and take care.